Okay, it is recording. Hi, everybody. Good. This is Honey Pat from Harmony Spiritual Center, and today's cooking show is going to be called Go With What You've Got. So the reason that I decided to do that is I'm thinking about all the people that have, have lost their uh, jobs, they're losing their homes, and I don't think that any of us have ever been have not had a portion of our lives where we've been without. So we're going to talk about this and talk about how to elevate your cooking and also how to incorporate prosperity tips along the way because at Harmony Spiritual Center we believe in prosperity for everybody but we also believe there's a science to it. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit too. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to start the cooking process along, we're going to do the potato soup first. And what we've done is in three tablespoons of butter, we've cut a leek from here to here, sliced it very thinly, and we're sauteing that in here. So now, and that's all done, so I am going to put some chicken broth in there and bring it to a boil so that we can... Uh, cook our potatoes. If you're in front of the camera, step to the side this way. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So after that comes to a boil, we'll add the potatoes to it. My friend Connie from church is here helping me, so I, I get to have a helper. I, <laughs> I don't have that in the rest of my life. <laughs> there. We're going to cover that up, bring it to a boil. So in the meanwhile, the the reason I'm doing these recipes is because they're so simple. Back when I was a new bride of 18, I had a really hard time with adulting. And we really were very, very poor, which is not uncommon for newly married kids. To me, there was never enough. I didn't know there was an alternative. So what I did, I would, I didn't know how to elevate food. I could go into the kitchen and say, there's nothing in here to eat. All I have is a leek and a potato. What in the world could I do with that? It was just like, we were gonna starve. <laughs> but since then, I've, along the way with life's experiences, I've learned how to make potato soup. So that's what we do with our prosperity thinking. We look at what we've got, we start where we are and make the habits change where we are right now. So one of the things I remembered learning from Edwin Gaines is, you can do this right where you are, no matter how poor you are, you can make sure the buttons are sewn on your clothes. You can make sure your hems are hemmed. You can elevate what you've got now, make sure you're clean. But one of the things that she did that I love, she had to change her consciousness to be worthy, to believe that she was worthy of something. And I remember back in those days, I sure didn't feel worthy. I didn't even know how I was going to make it from paycheck to paycheck. But she said, find something that you like that's a luxury to you. So that's what she did. She was a single mom and was raising a little girl. And she went out and got a jar of almond stuffed olives because that certainly was not in her limited budget. So she put those olives in the refrigerator and gave herself one every week. So that was her beginning step of feeling worthy about yourself. That's where we are, how we go with what we've got. Let's see if we're boiling yet. Not, not yet. It'll be a minute. When, when Glenn and I got together, and he, Glenn is my second husband, when we met, he had just lost everything in a divorce. My first husband died, and uh, I bought a restaurant and failed miserably and lost <laughs> everything. Oops. I did it to myself. So there we were. We were so low, we couldn't jump off a penny. So we went to hear Edwin Gaines, and she told us all these things that I just told you. 
But she said, don't let anything shabby touch your skin. So Glenn and I talked about it. We went home. And so we paid attention. We threw away all the holy socks, <laughs> all the holy underwear. And we went to Walmart because that's what we could do on the budget we had. And it was, I was 45 years old. And for the first time in my life, I had a matching bra and panties. So there I was, high dollar woman. Man, you should have seen me. All that silk touching my body. It's just bizarre how that changed my feeling about myself. Nobody could see that. It's underneath my clothes. But yet it changed that impression I had of myself. So that was my first step in prosperity thinking. When I go back and think about uh, not having enough food to eat when they, on Thursday when the payday was on Friday, I didn't know I could take this potato and a leaf and make a delicious meal out of it. Could you empty that in the strainer? This is about to boil and we're going to, uh, earlier I peeled and cubed five potatoes so that we could uh, cut short the time. And we're going to put those in this boiling chicken broth with the leeks and let them cook until they're soft. And then in the meanwhile, we're going to put some chicken broth in the other pan. This is the five lily soup. Okay, the five lily soup, same thing. What have you got in your house? Not a dadgum thing except an onion some garlic, a shallot, green onions, scallions, and a leek. And out of that, you have a gourmet soup. Okay, you ready? Thank you so much. See all those little teeny cute potatoes? Voila. Now we're putting this in here. That's in the lily? In the, in the, all the, the reason we call it five lily soup is because the, anything in the onion family is, that's a member of the lily family. Oh. See the little bulbs and things. So we're just going to. And that's the whole 32 ounces? Yes. So we're just going to bring that to a boil also. We're going to wait for this to come to a boil. It won't take too long. Now the reason that we talk about prosperity, the first thing that I had to understand is that we're energetic beings. The energy that flows through us is magnetic. So what we think and how we think about ourselves is what attracts life circumstance to us. So in changing that image of yourself, like my matching underwear, it was the first step. It has seemed so silly now to talk about it and so subtle, yet that was the first moment toward changing my view of myself from worthless, unable to earn money, unable to make anything work, losing all my money in the restaurant business. So I, had, I really had some change to be doing and I think about what I went through. It's nothing like the people that are going through now with the COVID-19. But yet, many of you are in a position where you've lost everything. And you think, where am I? What am I going to do? How are things going to change? So what we, besides changing our image of ourselves, we have to realize that we are a magnet for the creative energy of the universe to flow through us. Right. So people like to come to my house because they think I'm a good cook. And I, I do other things that use creative energy. So all I had to do was shift my consciousness instead of thinking, this is all that's in the house, we're going to starve. I learned to use my creative force and change these ordinary ingredients into a meal that's going to be delicious. It still doesn't cost very much. When I was young, I was raised in uh, foster homes. 
So I have a real heart for these kids that are growing up in, in foster care and they're aging out. And nobody's ever taught them anything. Nobody's taught them how to cook, how to do anything. And I feel that it's so important that they learn the basics of the, the cooking so that they can begin to take charge of their life and um, handle themselves and not spend all their money on fast food. Just like so many of you adults now that you've lived on fast food and now times are tough, what are you gonna do? You've got to learn to change your being, we, to become, have abundance attracted to us. We have to learn to change our consciousness. Okay, can you hear that boiling? Mr. Cameron, can you see that? Yes, Those indeed. Those boiling? Looking good. See, that's all there was. Leeks, chicken broth, and potatoes. It won't take long for those little cubes to become soft like mashed potatoes. Excellent. The one thing that I forgot is when I was cooking the leeks, I always put the salt in first so that the leeks will swell, sweat and emit more flavor. Okay, I didn't do that. I'll do it now. <laughs> Never too late, huh? Why? You gotta be creative. <laughs> How much did you put in? A handful. Handful. Which is usually about, um, it's a little less than a teaspoon or a tablespoon. My hands aren't very big. And that's not boiling yet. Okay, we talked about learning to use the creative force and then changing your consciousness about what you're thinking, whether it's about cooking dinner or deciding enough, I'm not going to be poor anymore. You change your energy, so when you change your thinking, you're changing your life, you're starting a new adventure. So those guys, you guys that are or in desperate straits right now because of the COVID virus, or maybe some other life circumstance. This right now is an opportunity for you to change, take charge of your thinking patterns and evolve. It's not gonna be overnight, it's going to be hard work. It's like uh, going to school. In kindergarten, you learn the alphabet. But the thing about it is, when you learn the alphabet, you can't ever unlearn it. <laughs> so when you get the basic, basics of prosperity thinking down, you will always have it. Let me see if these potatoes are... Oh, it sounds good. It smells good in here too. It smells oh. really good. You can speak up, we can, we can, you can speak. Not quite bushy. Huh? You can speak and be on the camera. Okay. Oh, yeah, speak okay. to me, ladies. <laughs> Reverend P.J. is our cameraman. Yeah. Connie's by his sister. Step over by here so they can see who's coming. Okay. This, this, yeah, come around. You too. Yep. This is our, we? this is where we are at our new spiritual here? fellowship. We're back here by her. Yep. <laughs> We're a spiritual we family. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. And I'm here too, just behind the camera. Hi, fellas. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we get to, oops. I'm going to tease everybody. We get to eat this delicious food. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she's been asking me for, since I, Sunday for the potato soup. Counting on it. I, I accidentally threw out the uh, oh, right. photograph version. So, do, does anybody have any questions about prosperity or? Good question. Good, good point. Is there something you'd like for me to you know, expound you, on? You have just brought up a whole lot of things. I've never gone without of anything. Oh, never. Well, and and I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, oh my God. Exactly. I don't mm -hmm. know what it's like. We had uh, one pair of shoes. We had, I don't know, a couple of, to go to school with. Oh, so you're saying you don't know what prosperity looks like, abundance. Well, I don't you know. You know, she doesn't know what going without is. I don't know like. what going, going with without that. Oh. is. Okay. Uh, my mother made my clothes because mm -hmm. I was so ungodly skinny. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, and, and I just never, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we had enough and, and we, we she, she was given a certain amount for the week. She lived within that week. Right. She didn't ever. Well, that's go another point too. It. You know, when you're talking about prosperity, it's about you know the abundance. Abundance. Yes. Prosperity is about abundance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so what all is included? We're looking at abundance. What do we mean when we say that? Well, because it's, you know, you food. You're doing a really good job here with the food thing, which yeah. is you know, I mean, if, to be hungry. That's and you don't have your spirit. Right. To be hungry is something we don't to, want. To have no food in the house. Right. When you have children. Right. Or even if it's just you, I mean, you you can gird it up and go without. Right. I yep. mean, you can do that. But when you have children there that are wanting something to eat, you've got to start doing something. You know, but when you're saying that, you have one pair of shoes and so on and so forth, do you realize that there's a segment of the population would think that they had were impoverished because they only had one pair of shoes? Yes. Right. And that's Correct. one of the uh, one of the things that we teach it. Harmony Spiritual Fellowship is about gratitude. Spiritual center. Spiritual, spiritual center. center. Excuse me. Thank you. But uh, gratitude mm. is one of those there things that changes your magnetic energy. Absolutely. That what it does is you're being aware of God's presence and that things are coming to you that you might have ignored before. You know, maybe a friend doesn't even know that you have no food. And they say, come on, uh, come with me, I'm going to buy you a hamburger. Right. What they don't know is that hamburger might be the only meal you'll have that day. But that is spirit from your, your magnetic energy drawing someone to you, and they don't even know why you're Correct. Bringing, bringing because we are all, all our activities are activities of God. Absolutely. All our activities okay. are activities. God cannot work without us. And so someone coming to ask you, can they buy something for you? That's that's a, absolutely spirit, God, whatever you call right. that thing, greater than yourself, responding to your prayers. Yeah. Okay. So that. that's that's how things begin to change in your life. The first step is becoming aware. Right. When I was an 18 year old and all I had in the house was an onion and a potato, I didn't. I wasn't aware that that could evolve into something great. Uh, and so we don't know. But when we choose now, I'm going to start becoming aware. I'm going to be conscious of, of what I do and how it may affect my magnetic energy. What am I drawing to me? Right. Am I moaning and groaning about my circumstances? Or am I looking around and trying to analyze what can I do? Right. And gratitude is a perfect way to start. Absolutely. It's such a great way to start. Just to be grateful for what you do have. When you start looking at being grateful you start looking around and saying, well you know what i actually do have this i have that i have the other thing um oh. you know and it just it just changes your perspective uh oh what happened was that face i popped i popped a potato on the floor <laughs> they, they weren't ready they will be in order to hasten the cooking of the potatoes i cut them in very small cubes i'm keeping the lid on here because that makes the steam pressurized ah inside the pot so that things will cook more quickly. That's a good tip. I was wondering why you kept having your hand on the pot. What's going on over there? <laughs> so now have, you've cut up everything for the lily soup? It, I cut it up earlier. I sliced all this up. The uh, bottom of green onion, or the scallion, I cut the tops and sliced them for garnish. Uh -huh. I uh, sliced this up. I sliced up shallots. So you don't dice them, you slice them. Well, because I put them in the food processor. Ah. And so all, all that was done beforehand, and I started cooking them so that we would be more efficient on the time that Very we good. used. Very good. What I was talking about earlier, I, I forgot to get to my point, is <laughs> once you become creative in one thing, that it, it, it's not that you've been gifted with the ability to cook. I mean, I had to work hard and learn this. What my gift was is contacting creative energy, that opening myself up and knowing the source had my answer. Right. Uh, and then I channeled it into cooking. I do other creative things. Uh, 
but it's not that those things are, aren't I lucky because I have all these gifts. I only have one gift, and that's being open to creative source. You know, you talked earlier about being worthy. Talk a little bit about, about how, that, how that brings abundance to you or allows abundance to come to you, feeling worthy to get okay, it. Okay, well, like I said earlier, I don't know if you heard that PJ asked, how did uh, feeling worthy, feeling worthy your... draw abundance to me? Yes. Well, feeling unworthy yes. puts a physical, literal barrier to your energy flow. Right. Like, here's the energy. And then if you feel unworthy and blocked, there it is. Nothing can get to you. Nothing you send out can go past. You're putting that negative energy barrier in front of you. But when you feel worthy, that goes away. That's not even part of your thinking anymore. You feel worthy, and people see that in you. And then they see your confidence. Right. They your, energetically sense it. And they sense it, and yeah. so then you suddenly become the go-to person, yeah. and things start coming your way. Right. Uh, I know that in my lifetime, I've had friends that have been battered women. Mm -hmm. And so they were in a situation where they were made to feel unworthy. And finally, the guy is gone. They make sure he's gone. But it may take them one or two relationships to get totally cleansed of that unworthiness. Yeah. And the moment they change their consciousness about themselves, they begin to magnetize another type of person to them. Yeah. Back to Edwin Gaines. I love the story that she told about she was young, she was pregnant, and she lived in Hong Kong with her husband who was there on business. And one day he left. He left her in, pregnant in Hong Kong with no money, no way to get back. So she finally did come back, and she laughs and she tells about, uh, she said, I hated men. <laughs> I thought every man was a no good SOB. And she said, and I'm here to tell you, every no good SLB was lined up on my front porch <laughs> until I changed my thinking. And then when I changed my thinking, a more worthy candidate came into my life for my affection. Right. And so tell them who, how, who Edwin Gaines is again okay. and how they can get a hold of her Okay, stuff. Edwin Gaines is, a, in our world, is a very famous prosperity teacher. He's written a lot of books. She's retired now, but she has changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people with her teachings. Uh, what I love about her, she's so down to earth and real that what she's lived, you feel like you've lived also. That she's not someone that's got a hundred million dollars and telling you to suck it up. <laughs> yeah, if you can't eat bread, then eat cake. You know, <laughs> screw you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But basically, that's how I feel. But she's lived the life that we've all had at one moment or another. Right. So her books are available at the library. You could buy them. You could Absolutely. borrow them. They're widely available. Yes. We have several in our own Absolutely. library at Harmony Spiritual Center, which, by the way, we're moving, and it'll be ready in about three weeks. So if you want to come and visit us there and borrow a book, we're there for you. Okay, let's see if I got a soft potato. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, looking good. Would you, let's see, I need that bowl right there. Okay, what I'm going to do for this potato soup, can I move this? Yes, that, yeah, you can do it though. I'm gonna take some of these potatoes out. Oh, just some, not all, okay. Because I, I like my soup a little bumpy. Okay. okay. You, you may want it all smooth and you won't do this. Okay. So do I. You like this little I, I, want, I want to have something to sink my teeth into. Okay. So I take about half, about half of these out. Is this one of Glenn's favorites? Yes. Glenn is your, who's Glenn? Yeah, Glenn, Glenn, well, Glenn I love any soup. Now tell, gonna, tell, well, tell everybody on Facebook who Glenn is. Oh, sorry, I thought you lived next door. <laughs> <laughs> You should know that. No, Glenn is my husband, Reverend Glenmore. 
the other half of the middle. <laughs> the person that appreciates my cooking. Absolutely. And who is very thin and can get all he wants, and I shall say no more. <laughs> uh, I will say this also, he does seem to have an alarm clock in his belly. So he knows. Five o'clock, 12 o'clock, five o'clock. All right. Better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now. Now what I'm going to do is take the rest of these, um, the leeks and the uh, potatoes and put them in a blender. So is there any way to do it if you don't have a blender? That's the best way to do it. You need to have a blender? Well, if you don't have a blender, you could do a, put a mixer in here. Oh, okay. You could do it. Okay. You could do it. Uh -huh. Take mixers, okay. Or you can, oh, you can, can you mash it? Potato masher. Very good. All right. And what this is the part that thickens the soup. So Connie uh, doesn't do gluten. So in this soup, she doesn't have to worry about there being any flour. But normally, would you put flour in it? No, because the mushed up potatoes uh, act as flour. Mm -hmm. Okay. In order to facilitate the blending, I'm going to pour a little of this chicken broth in there. Okay. There. I'm going. I'm going to move this one over here because this very good burner cooks fast. Okay. There. And now I'm going to put this cheese in there. So oh. it'll mush it up. Okay. How much cheese is that? It's about one cup. Okay. So it's potato cheese soup. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, because I'm going to put parsley in it, I like to see little green flecks of parsley. Mm -hmm. I don't like chopping the parsley up. So I've got this handy dander blender that I'm going to. So I'm just going to grab a chunk, <laughs> chunk and chunk it. put uh -huh. it in there, and then when it finishes blending, it's all going to be chopped up into teeny weeny bits. Great. Wow. Okay. Now, with this blender, uh, being hot doesn't seem to um, make it explode, but be careful with your blender. <laughs> What blending? Smoothie. Smoothie? Okay. I'm going to add a little more liquid. It's not going fast enough for me. Just in case, I'm going to jump back. <laughs> Mm. 
<laughs> and, uh, well, let's just pour it with owner. Well, I don't know why it's sticking, but I don't want to pop out all over myself. So. Well, there you go. This is more going with what you've got. <laughs> And then the rest, the rest of the potatoes, we'll put those back in there. And I think I'm going to get a little milk and put in there. Okay. To thin that down. Are you using cream or milk? What are you using? Heavy cream. Heavy cream? No, cream's for the other one. Okay. Okay. With this, excuse me, with, with the cheese in there, it's already rich enough. Okay. Ah, okay. And then we'll keep that on simmer, and we'll have potato soup. Well, all right. But can you, thank you. Yeah. Can you see the little green flecks in there, how I, the parsley chopped right up? Are you talking about inside, inside, inside the, the blender? Inside the blender. Yeah, inside, inside the blender. So. All right, very good. You can thin that out with the milk. Okay. My kitchen bullet tanky. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't care. Oh man. Good. <laughs> Now, look here. <laughs> well, I would have, but it wasn't mine. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we we're going to let that simmer while we finish the other soup. Okay, great. You could also thin this out with some more chicken broth. Okay, what did you thin it out with earlier? Just water? But yeah, I, no, I thinned it out with milk. With milk, okay. What I suspect is I put one too many potatoes in it and it made it too thick. But I knew everybody was going to want to eat so. <laughs> How did you know? so I can start all over. And uh, let me taste it because I put the salt, I forgot to put the salt in the beginning of all these. Yes, that needs some salt. Zero. Any more questions about prosperity? No. Cutting, cutting, block of me. You don't have to dry that. Yeah, person. this is this is the one that's live. Hi. Oh. Okay. No, I okay, was just going to try. I don't want it. Huh? I don't want it wet to go down in there. Oh, okay. Thank you. PJ we, just did that. Okay, and you'll remember now. This is a five lily soup. We put all the lilies in there. The uh, we put the lilies. We put <laughs> garlic, leeks shallots, onions, and scallions. Talk about the creative force. You know how when, when there's an idea and it goes across the universe and that like six corporations will come up with the same right. brilliant invention? Correct. Well, I decided when I owned a restaurant that I was going to create this soup. I thought it would be really good to be like a cream of onion soup. And I worked so hard on developing it. I made it, I served it, and then later, when Google came out, I looked it up, and I decided, I saw that 
137 other people also did the same thing. <laughs> A good idea. It's worth passing on. Right. So the universe is, is the source, and you're just a conduit. And my way of fixing this may be a little different. Uh, one of the things that, I don't know why I did my tarot on, it's in here. I was going to get tarragon and put in there for my garden, but. <laughs> but the universe said, <laughs> this is it. It's all you need. So then I was going to get my dry tarragon out. It was all gone. So I'm going to put this in here before I stir it up. It really needs more than that. Uh, tarragon's is a wonderful French herb that Texas heat is just too hard to grow. But they also have a Mexican false tarragon. Some people call it Copper Canyon Daisy, uh, but it's a it's tastes just like this, and you can use it in the same dishes. Uh, it's just that it's Mexican tarragon, and and you can grow it in the heat. My scooper. Okay, I'm going to carry this now over to my blender. We're going to reuse it. And we're going to blend up all these varieties of, see the results of all those sauteed vegetables? Oh. What? Look at little different sides of um, this. Right. It doesn't matter how you... I just did these in my food processor because they're not for appearance sake, they're just for taste. So it doesn't matter if there's evenly sliced or anything okay. like that. Okay, so I was asking you earlier about the dicing or slicing, and that's why right. it didn't matter. Okay, very good. Now another step that I forgot, uh, when I was sauteing the vegetables, ordinarily I'll put the flour in at that point, I cook the vegetables in uh, two tablespoons of butter uh, and then put those in. And then at a certain point, I ordinarily put flour in there and make a roux. I forgot. But never fear. <laughs> because now. My pad is here. <laughs> here we go. We can put it in at this point. Well, all right. I'm just going to mix it up. Mm -hmm. so how much of that juice do you know just to cover it? Just to cover just it. Just to cover it. Just now, to cover the veggies. If you don't want to fill it up with all that because it'll burst out of the blender and burn yourself. Okay. All right. Now, in restaurants, what they do, they make this uh, sauce called velouté. Velouté. Which is, means it's like velvet, mm. and it's smooth, and they take all of these things and they push them through a strainer, uh, yes. so there's no little substance. We don't do that. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Make it easy, huh? Right. All right. <laughs> well, let's heat that back up. And cook it a little bit. And remember, you come home, all you have in the house is onions. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, question. Have you ever tried to, um, thank you, mm -hmm. to make them, I don't normally keep all of that, those onion, different onions in right. my home. I normally only keep just an onion, and if the recipe calls for it, a green onion. Right. But I don't keep leeks well, or... Is that yeah, something that I, you normally... I normally keep... I like leeks because when they're cooked in something, um, what it, it gives the dish a tang. Okay. 
okay. rather than the regular onion. So I like to keep leeks around, uh, but they're not that expensive. Uh, and you refrigerate them or you keep them out? Uh, I keep everything in the refrigerator. Yeah, me too. It's Texas. Hello. Good point. So what yeah. would I do? Use use part leek and part onion? Yes, use all five lilies. Which is nice. onion, leek, what's the other? Green onion. Gr scallions. Scallions. Garlic. Oh, garlic. Okay. And shallots. Shallots. Okay. Okay. So you so four onions and the garlic. Well, okay. then it becomes three lily soup. Oh, oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, thank me. you. That's what Very I was getting to. Very good. All right. One of the one of the barriers to being having a prosperity consciousness is being in the box where the only way you can do things are by directions. Right. Tap into that creative source. Which you've done all night because you said, oh, I forgot that. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot that. Oh, well. Right. And you just move on. Right. Very good. Now look at that. See, it's going to be. Hey, do that again. Do that again. Look at that. What does that look like? Look at that. Uh, Beautiful. And now, what did you use the tomato paste for? Oh, thank you. <laughs> See? See? See that? See that thing? Ordinarily, when I, I make foods and they're a little like you forgot. white. White. <laughs> In order to spruce them up and make them look richer, I use my handy dandy tomato paste in the tube. There, just, just a that dry. much, okay. and it makes it more golden and richer looking. Does uh, it affect the taste at all? No. Okay. Not at all. If it doesn't look like it's enough, put some more. I remember uh, when I was growing up, the times I did stay with my mother, that she was always very thrifty with her cooking. And we had a dish that two of my kids love, two of them like, <laughs> which is creamed tuna fish on toast. Mm. Oh, I did used to do that. And so it's like a cheese sauce. You add in tuna fish and green peas. Uh, but if there weren't an, if there was not enough cheese, she would put whatever cheese there was, and she would put paprika in the sauce. Ah, color it. So it would look more golden, and she'd fool us. <laughs> so we used to do stuff like that. That's when funny. My dad I think it's out of town. So he, yeah, if if you're like just starting out. And how much would you think this costs to, to make these dishes? This is, potato soup is enough for an uh, army. It's five potatoes, leeks, chicken broth. So this dish probably cost under $2 to make. Right. So it's time to start thinking out of the box. Um, if any of you guys are in foster care and you're watching this, or, or you're a newlywed or new to cooking, Come by, and our, our, the church will give you my phone number. I'll be glad to to give you any tricks that I can. Or leave a message. You can message us on Facebook. You're watching us on Facebook yeah. now. Leave a comment, direct message us. Well, Reverend Pat will get it. Yeah, whether it's about cooking or anything. prosperity, prosperity. Uh, just whatever it's about. This right. is the thing about Harmony Spiritual Center is that we're all very approachable. Uh, that our spirituality is not off in a cloud, all, only on Sundays, that we live a, a giving life, an abundant life, and a sharing life. Yes. Okay, here we have it. And now, I'm going to uh, add a little heavy cream to this. I was reading about the difference between coconut milk, coconut cream, cream of cocoa, and um, they were saying that if a dish calls for heavy cream, you could use coconut cream instead. How would that change the flavor of this if you use that instead of heavy cream? It would be very good. If I were doing that, uh, a natural companion uh -huh. to coconut cream is lemongrass. Ah, yes, right. And that comes in the tube, and you could change this from uh, this kind of dish uh, to a more Asian flavor, more Asian flavor, and use coconut milk. That's that's the thing about being tapped into the creative source. 
you look and you say, well, I've got this, I've got that. Well, what happened if I did this? Yeah. And if it didn't turn out right, so what? Yeah. I mean, how much did it cost? Right. <laughs> Two dollars to make the pot. Right. But this is a, a very ele elegant suit and uh, it's something that somebody else wouldn't make. I don't think that maybe a, a family with children might care for this suit. The, it, it's because of the adults. Yeah, it's an adult suit. Yeah. Uh, but still, sometimes adults lose their jobs and they get hungry. And certainly they like the potato and cheese soup. Right. Who doesn't like that? So, uh, even if it, you're the only one there and you're cooking, do something special for yourself and mm. think outside the box. So give us a call if you need anything. Uh, text something in on Facebook. We love sharing with you. And we love you and bless you and behold the Christ in you. And so it is. And so it is. So it All is. right. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Penny Pat.